viewer videos. This next clip was submitted by Nukestop by viewer Anna Garcia. It allegedly shows security footage of a ghost appearing around what locals claim is a haunted well in the small town of Orcos, Peru. A man seems to be sitting near the well, and then just seems to... Uh, well, I don't know actually what he does, but it's creepy as hell. But is this a ghost, or just the oddest camera glitch ever recorded? You decide. Nuke's Top 5 viewer Isaac says that his uncle recently experienced something he just can't explain. Checking his Nest security camera, he saw what appeared to be a dark figure just standing in the road outside his house. But this is where things take a truly disturbing turn. seem to pass right through this bizarre figure. So Isaac's uncle decides to go out to investigate and things are about to get even weirder. The dark figure seems to just disappear as the man approaches. So is this something supernatural watching his house? Or just what do you think this is? Let me know. Twelve years ago, a band in Veracruz, Mexico was playing their final gig as one of their members was about to move to another town. At the time, they didn't notice anything unusual about the event at all. But later, as the guys rewatched the video of their performance, they notice something that chills them to their core. For this one, there's probably no reason to ask, but did you see it? Lurking behind the TV in the right corner, a ghastly looking girl with what seems to be a pale and distorted face seems to be peeking out at the band. What's even weirder is that if we cut to different segments of the video, the strange pale girl has disappeared. The guys in the band believe that this bizarre figure might be the ghost of a friend of theirs who took her own life years earlier, perhaps dropping in for one last goodbye at the band's final performance. A cry for help. D from the YouTube channel D's Dark Adventures travels to what is known to be the most haunted state park in Ohio, the Beaver Creek State Park in East Liverpool. The historic park is said to be a hotspot of ghostly sightings and even reports of mysterious creatures. It's already late and very dark when D walks deep into the woods of the park. She finds a spot to settle and begins to experiment with her EMF meter and a spirit box app on her phone. She plans to test whether the stories of supernatural activity in Beaver Creek State Park are true. It did not go well. Hopefully y'all can see me, I don't know. Ah, right myself. Anyway, I've got the EMF detector and I'm gonna, um, is that gonna help? I'm blind myself. See if I can get anything to, I interact with that when I, my old one I used to have. My old one I used to have, I broke. So I'm gonna try to do it this time. What the Oh 
in the <laughs> guys i was not even on that I wasn't even on the app i don't know what how that came out of my freaking phone a troubling sound startles d as it seems to come from right where she's sitting what the a little shaken up, Dee believes the sound might have come from the app on her phone, but she isn't sure and she is now freaked out. Dee decides to carefully trek back through the woods to her car and just leave. But what happens next makes her blood run cold. I don't know what to do guys, I don't want to be in here. I wanted to make a good video for you guys, but I don't know what the heck made that noise. It sounds like a dang wild cat, like a big, big cat, but we don't have big cats here. I don't feel good in this place, guys. I really don't know what to do. I really don't know what, where to go. This is not good. I think they're trying to lure me out. There's flashlights. I don't know if you guys can see them. I don't know what to do, guys. If I move, they're gonna hear me. Help me. <laughs> the voice of a man can be heard yelling for help and Dee can see flashlights in the distance. Alone and afraid, Dee doesn't trust the call for help at all, so she keeps her flashlight and hides in the darkness. Suddenly, the voice can be heard right next to her, and in terror, she just makes a run for it. Later, Dee says that she did make it home safe, and to this day, she says she still has no idea who could have been yelling for help out in the dark woods of Beaver Creek State Park at that time. Could it have been something paranormal or even scarier? Were those real people out in the middle of the dark woods stalking Dee and terrorizing her just for fun? Let me know what you think. We need scary videos. So if you see something that you think should be on Nukes Top 5, be sure to email us at nukestop5 at gmail.com. Project Fear. After the unfortunate end of their popular TV series, Destination Fear, Team members Dakota, Chelsea, Tanner, and Alex are back on the road to explore and investigate extremely haunted locations, this time on YouTube. With a new name, Project Fear, the team decides to go back to the old Sweet Springs Sanatorium in West Virginia, a place where three years ago they experienced things that to this day, they still can't explain. Did he know that you have passed away? What? 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 That was like a woman. Please tell me that was on. I have the chills. Did you know that you have passed away? What? What? Did you hear any of it, Chelsea? This happened by close to my room. So I looked back and I'm like, why is Tanner over here? And I'm like, why is Tanner over here? Like, <laughs> this location literally scarred me. So a little backstory. Sweet Springs Sanatorium served as a hospital for tuberculosis patients in the 1940s. It is estimated that over a thousand people lost their lives inside the sanatorium walls. Many of these people were buried in unmarked graves behind the building. The sanatorium later served as a nursing home for the old and poor before eventually being shut down in the 1990s. Now, not surprisingly, with a history like that, the largest state is said to be extremely haunted. 
Visitors have reported hearing loud, unexplained voices and screaming, and many have witnessed doors slamming shut on their own. Even creepier, some visitors actually claim to have seen ghostly apparitions, most notably that of a woman dressed in white standing in the window on the third floor in room 3007. So after their visit three years ago, the Project Fear team is a little hesitant to return and when they interview the current manager of the sanatorium, Cindy Harper, it just makes them even more nervous. So I have a question. So when doing the research, you talked about how you were like thrown down the stairs at yes. one point. I don't normally get pushed down the stairs. That's only happened one time, but it was bad enough. Like I told you, I had bruises. You were like thrown down. It wasn't like a couple stairs. It was stairs. like the push. I, I mean, I actually, I was expecting to be a human attacking me and I, I found no one. So I drop all my equipment. I don't know what it looked like going down the stairs. <laughs> Just my oh my, my God. <laughs> okay. That was on the door, dude. That was the loudest knock. This is in the middle of the day still. That sounded like right next to my head. While interviewing Cindy about her terrifying experiences in the sanatorium, a loud bang on the floor startles both her and the Project Fear team. But there's no one inside the building. Cut to later that day. And as darkness falls, the team decides that in order to try to provoke a response, investigator Tanner should head down to the basement all by himself. The rest of the team explores the most haunted area of the sanatorium, the third floor. After hearing a few unexplained noises, Dakota, Chelsea, and Alex begin a digital recording session inside the most haunted room. Room 3007. What happens next shocks the whole team, including Tanner, who's still completely alone in the basement. We were here several years ago exploring this building. Do you remember us? We were here several years ago exploring this building. Do you remember us? Dude, it said, I remember Tanner. Oh, I hear that. It said, I remember Tanner. I heard yes, and then there's a pause. Yep, I, I remember something. It's Tanner. It says Tanner, dude. Let me play it again, just to verify. We were here several years ago, exploring this building. Do you remember us? Dude says yes. There's like a one second pause and then it's a whispering, I remember Tanner. <gasps> hey Tanner. Go for Tanner. So you were now. I'm not trying to scare you, I'm trying to give you a warning. We were doing digital recorder and thing is here. Now you debating about even like telling you this, but like at the end of the day, like it's a warning. Like we want you to know to be on like your toes. What did I do? When we end up meeting with you in a little bit. I will show you the digital recorder, the EVP. It's freaky. Okay, man. Uh, what the? I heard something. Yo, are you okay? Can you do that again? What the f I thought I heard a voice, man. Promise if it's not us, dude. And we don't hear you right now on the third floor. So it's not like the echo or anything. I don't know what's happening, but let's go hit this part of the third floor and then we'll, then we'll go to Tanner. The team eventually finds Tanner in the sprawling sanatorium basement and they have him listen to what they captured on their digital recorder. We were here several years ago, exploring this building. Do you remember us? Oh, what do you hear? We didn't tell you what we heard yet. We remember Tanner. Yes. Dude. It says, yes, I remember Tanner. Do you remember us? That is clear, dude. Tanner is 
just the creepiest part because it's yes. so clear. Similar to what happened on their previous visit three years earlier, the Project Fear team finds themselves hearing clear voices, one of which seems to remember Tanner. <laughs> the four friends then split up to sleep at separate haunted locations inside the building. Chelsea and Alex set up in the basement, Tanner on the second floor, and Dakota on the third floor, just outside haunted room 3007. It goes without saying that none of them slept a wink that night. All of them start to hear loud unexplained bangs and strange noises. But Dakota, up on the most haunted third floor, has a unique experience all his own. And it's downright chilling. What the f Whoa! Hello? That's not like a doorknob, like, rattling. I just heard you. <sighs> okay. I went down and explored to see if I could find, like, the source of that noise. I have no idea what it was. I looked in a bunch of rooms. But it could, it literally could have came from any single door at any single- uh, What the f That was a girl's high-pitched voice. Hello? I just was down there too, I was just down there. It literally could have came from any single door at any single- uh, What the f any single door at any single what the f Can you do that again? It makes sense to hear like a high pitched female where I'm at right now with the lady in white on this floor. Shut. I hope I caught that on camera. No way. No way. Yeah, that door is shut. This door, I just watched with my eyes, shut. No one. A disturbing voice scares Dakota out of his seat and then a door at the end of the hallway closes by itself. Now hundreds of commenters on the Project Fear YouTube channel believe that this door doesn't just close by itself. But look closely and what do you think? So is the Sweet Spring Sanatorium haunted by something that's strong enough to speak, slam doors, and even appear as a shadow apparition? You decide. You can watch this entire two-part investigation with many more terrifying paranormal moments over on the YouTube channel, Project Fear. Imprints. For two years, Eric Gunner has been experiencing relentless paranormal activity. Even stranger, the ghost or entity seems to follow him wherever he goes as he moves from house to house in Mexico. But most terrifying of all, each time Eric tries to get away, the spirit that follows him seems to become more and more aggressive. So just like many nights in the past, Eric and his little dog Bean are woken up by the sound of loud banging on his bedroom door. This time Eric is prepared with a flashlight and a camera intending to capture evidence of the hell that he's been living through. Here, 
Eric's dog sniffs around and seems to be a little shaken up by something that Eric can't see. Eric decides to leave the little dog safe upstairs in his bedroom while he checks the house. Is there a Sentí como si me soplaran en la nuca, no sé, como si me hicieran así como... Mejor ya no pregunto eso. Eric says he felt something blow on the back of his neck, and his camera actually captures the sound when it happens. Uy. 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 Eric has only been downstairs for six minutes when he suddenly notices something downright creepy. No, ma. No manches. Está viendo lo que yo. Y, 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 y no solo eso, eh. Ahí en el, en el refri tenía una foto de mi mamá. Ahorita en el, no, bueno, no me fijé en el video, pero pues antes de irme a dormir ahí la tenía. No está, ni, ni tampoco está la cruz. ¿Qué pedo? A cross hanging on the living room wall and a photo that was hanging on the fridge only six minutes earlier are now mysteriously gone. What makes this so creepy is that Eric has barely moved and has been standing in the same general area for the entire six minutes. No one could have snuck in and taken the cross and photo without being noticed or at least making a sound. But it's what happens next that is truly terrifying. Two little childlike hands press up against the glass windows and door. When Eric gets closer, a bizarre face emerges from the darkness. Eric has had enough. He runs back upstairs to his dog beans and doesn't sleep for the rest of the night. Just under the surface. A group of fishermen in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico are returning home late one night when they spot something very strange beneath the water's surface. Submarino. Que no se le calme mucho. 
Wow, mira eso. Uy, ¿Qué es el qué? ¿Qué es el A strange bright blue light seems to be strobing in uneven bursts beneath the ocean waves. The guys head in for a closer look, and this is when things start to get really weird. Mira, empezó en el puente y está en la boya, mira la boya. El puente está a mano izquierda, a mano izquierda. Mira eso, mira eso, mira. Mira, mira, mira eso. Hay algo ahí. Mira algo ahí. Míralo. Yo no sé qué carajo es eso. Dale para atrás. Yo no quiero saber. Dale. 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 No quiero saber. No quiero saber. Dale. Dale. No te crees que yo vi algo. No. Dale. Sí, eso es eso. ¿Murió? Something dark and humanoid can be seen breaching the surface of the water and moving through the strange blue light. When the video was shared to the internet, many viewers' first thoughts were that it could simply be a diver. But others were quick to point out that there are no boats nearby. So where would a diver come from? And also the oddly shaped figure doesn't seem to be wearing a diving tank. Finally, the figure seems to swim upright almost as if it is somehow walking quickly through the water. The bizarre clip went viral on the internet with many viewers suggesting that this humanoid figure could be anything from a creature to an alien or even a mermaid. But what do you think this is? Let me know down in the comments. Two years of terror. Over the last two years, Lauren Combs from Waco, Texas has been experiencing terrifying unexplained activity in and around her home. Posting her videos, Lauren disappeared from social media for nine months before she finally returned with an update. Lauren says that over the last month, she's been feeling ill and drained of energy and having a very hard time. But strange things continue to happen around her home. One night as Lauren is on the phone with her boyfriend on her front porch, something happens that is truly bizarre. Hey, when you come over? I gotta wait for my work clothes to dry. I'm coming. Okay, I'm hungry. I understand that. I can't just not leave out my work clothes. Okay, that's fair. Well, do you want me to just make something here? What do you have? I mean, I have like pizzas or maybe chicken nuggets, nothing crazy. Can you bring your No, can you, can you bring your ranch? Can you bring your ranch? Dude, my f***ing door just closed. Is that the same sound? Yes. And it's locked. What? I just got locked out of my house. Is there here? Yes, nobody's here. Uh, that's kind of scary. Where are the doors? Lara! Luna's inside by herself. I don't even see you in there. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Lauren's 
front door suddenly slams shut, locking Lauren out of her home with her dog still somewhere inside all alone. Lauren panics and hurries around her house to get inside through her back door. As she enters, then that door suddenly slams shut as well, and her doorbell begins to ring over and over all by itself. Lauren says that she eventually found her dog mysteriously trapped in the back room. The dog was a little shaken up, but otherwise, he was completely fine. Now, cut to two months later. One night when Lauren is in bed, she is woken up by her dogs a little after midnight. What happens next is downright chilling. Someone knocks on Lauren's window, but when she opens her window to look into her backyard, there's no one there. Then as she turns, she hears an odd growl near the open window that makes her scream. But did you see it? Right after Lauren screams and wildly pans her camera back towards the window, something odd can be seen right outside just below the windowsill, but only for a brief second. Who or what? is this. After this incident, Lauren hasn't been back on TikTok. But there is one important thing to be learned here, and that is if someone or something pecks on your window in the middle of the night, don't open it. Like, why? Why would you? Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, do it now and then also turn on all notifications so you never miss a video. You can also follow me on the socials and just say uh, hi there, Nuke. Anyway, hopefully I will see you next video.